Hello, this is Josh Patel, a perfect scorer on the Biology EOC, and today we will be going over Chapter 5, which is all about cell division and cell growth, Lesson 4, which is asexual reproduction. So our key concept is many organisms reproduce by cell division. And in the last video, at the very end, I introduced asexual reproduction. And basically, it is reproduction involving one parent, and they produce a gen genetically identical offspring. So it's like a clone. So binary fission is similar in function to mitosis. As we know, in a previous video, we learned about mitosis. And mitosis is something your toe does. So what does your toe do? It produces a genetically identical cell, like it duplicates. And that's the process of mitosis. It's like reproduction in cells. So asexual reproduction is the creation of offspring from a single parent, as I stated before. And then binary fission is like a subsection of this. And so binary, binary fission produces two daughter cells genetically identical to the parent cell but it occurs in prokaryotes and if we remember eukaryotes is says it's like you it has the word you in it and so we are all eukaryotes so it's like big multicellular complex animals but prokaryotes are like those small bacteria unicellular animals that have no membrane bound organelles so basically binary fission is mitosis or asexual reproduction but it's in prokaryote so it's the same thing and this is the process it's like exactly like mitosis so this is the parent cell it duplicates dna and then it just basically divides so it's the same thing as mitosis but it occurs in more simple unicellular prokaryotes so the environment determines what form of reproduction is most advantage, advantageous. So at a, the reproduction, they're talking about asexual and sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is advantage in considerably favorable conditions and in consistently favorable conditions. So as we know, asexual reproduction is like duplicating or creating clones of yourself. And when they say consistently favorable conditions, they're talking about like your environment is always favorable or that's always what you want. So that's asexual. That's when asexual is an advantage. And then sexual reproduction is an advantage in changing conditions. So changing conditions would be changing environments, changing temperature, changing habitats, basically changing anything and how you live. And so most of our world changes, so most of us should be sexual reproduction because that's probably better because most of the time you're changing. And another bad thing about asexual reproduction is if one thing in your population catches a certain disease, basically your whole population will because you just keep producing clones of yourself. It's like cancer, cancerous cells as we learned in the last video. If one thing catches it, it just keeps producing and it won't stop. And they'll all eventually get the disease. So to, so to clarify asexual and sexual reproduction, let's give an example. So let's use giraffes. Okay, so long ago, giraffes, they all had short necks, which is a true thing. And this is going to be a little mythical because giraffes aren't asexual. They don't reproduce asexually. But let's pretend they do. So if all these short giraffes produce asexually, they would always produce the same exact giraffe they were before. So they'll all be little short giraffes with short necks. And they can only eat the brush on the floor. They can't reach high tree leaves. So they always eat the floor leaves. And if their environment was consistently favorable, it would always they would always have enough food to feed everybody. So the floor will always be full of plenty of little plants, which isn't true, but let's pretend it is. So then asexual reproduction would be an advantage because if it was consistently favorable and it was always short or all the food was on the ground and one of them and they were sexual, so their environment was consistently favorable, but they were sexual reproduction, some of them will produce 
abnormal long neck giraffes and it would be hard for them to reach the short floor so sexual reproduction would not be good in a consistently favorable condition if it is not favorable to your outcome or your animal you produce which is the long head giraffe so that's why asexual reproduction is good for a consistently favorable environment but now let's go to sexual reproduction so which giraffes are so this is the real world example so long ago they were all short neck giraffes and eventually all the short neck giraffes ate up all the floor and some of them had babies that were long neck giraffes because they were sexual reproduction and eventually one of the genes come out for long neck and one of them becomes long neck and so these long neck giraffes are able to survive because they can reach the extra food on top while all the food on the floor is disappeared because all the short neck giraffes ate them so eventually all the short neck giraffes die and only long neck giraffes survive and they produce they reproduce with each other producing more long neck giraffes so they adapted to this changing condition of food on the floor to food in the trees so that's the main lesson of this lesson so this graph is just showing that um, cell division is an exponential graph so like let's say you had two cells and two cells did mitosis they produce four four produces eight and eight produces 16 so it like doubles every time kind of but it's so it's not it's saying it's not a linear graph like a linear graph would be 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 1 is 4 4 you get to 5 5 to 6 6 to 7 that would be a straight line but it's actually exponential because it like triples or doubles each time so it's saying like the number of bacteria increases exponentially because of the cell division so some eukaryotes reproduce through mitosis as we know eukaryotes are what we are complex organelles or co complex animals and mitosis is what your toe does so it it produces asexually so some eukaryotes which is kind of rare produce through mitosis so some examples are budding and budding forms a new organism from a small projection growing on the surface of the parent so here's the bud and this is like the parent it would basically produce a new organism so like let's say a tree was growing and it had a small projection on the side of it and it grew a whole other tree that would be called budding and then fragmentation is the splitting of the parent cell or parent into pieces that each grow into a new organism so that would be like if you had let's say you had a tree and you split it in half and each half okay here's an example actually a real example would be jellyfish so jellyfish if you cut them in half they each become a new jellyfish so back long ago when we had a jellyfish crisis and they were being like extinct scientists took jellyfish and like just cut them into pieces and threw them back into the ocean so they would grow so that would be fragmentation if you split it apart each new piece grows into a new organism and then another one is vegetative reproduction which forms a new plant from the modification of a stem or underground structure of the parent plant so that'd be like roots how a root produces like a new potato plant so that's that way but we don't really need to know these three very well but the main part of this lesson was all about the difference between asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction so this is the end of the video today which was all about chapter 5 which is on cell division and cell growth lesson 4 which is all about asexual reproduction our next video will be on chapter 5 lesson 5 which is all about multicellular life